Welcome to another interview about the new Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists online. The Encyclopedia, or ESDA, was released on July 1st and is the Adventist Church's first online reference work. It features thousands of articles from around the world on a variety of topics, including articles on Adventist missionaries, evangelists, institutions, organizations, and beliefs. If you haven't checked the ESDA website yet, please do so. It's at encyclopedia.adventist.org. That's encyclopedia.adventist.org. And you can browse more than 2,200 articles and look at more than 4,000 photographs. To make people more aware of the encyclopedia, we have been uh, holding a series of video podcasts. I am your host, Dr. David Trim, and with me today is Dr. Dragoslava Santrak. I am the editor of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, and Dr. Santrak is the managing editor. And our guest today is Dr. Daniel Zhao, the Executive Secretary of the Chinese Union Mission. Daniel, thank you very much for agreeing to be with us today. Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, Daniel, just before we talk about uh, the encyclopedia, not all of our viewers and listeners will understand the (coughs) unusual situation of the Chinese Union Mission. Um, Many church members will know that the Seventh-day Adventist Church works through its 13 world divisions, but in the last 10 years, it's also worked through two attached unions. That is, they're unions, um, but they work directly with the General Conference, and that's the situation of the Chinese Union mission. Do you want to just say a little bit about that for our viewers? Yes, um, uh, Chinese Union Mission, uh, as uh, we are right now, was uh, organized in 1999. Uh, and uh, we have been tasked with the responsibility to oversee the work uh, in China. As uh, you know, and uh, that uh, the work in China really uh, is the government uh, uh, three self principle, which means that uh, they they have their own governance and uh, for although that we have right now about uh, uh, close to half million uh, animals in china but uh, um, they are they have their own organization uh, we as a chinese union mission although we are in hong kong but we have we are we are not in any way to oversee or or administer the uh, the church work in china but we do provide support since 1999, the, for, the forming of a uh, Chinese Union Mission. Actually, even before that, we are supporting the uh, Chinese church uh, in several different areas. For example, we, um, we uh, uh, provide uh, uh, the uh, training, provide uh, uh, consultation on doctrinal issues. That's mm-hmm. something that uh, the government is okay for us to be involved with because we are worldwide church and we have 20, 28 fundamental beliefs. So that if, if there's any area that uh, the ch- church in China have any question about uh, our doctrinal issues, we can interact, we can have training, we can, we can talk, talk to them about. Another area is that uh, we, uh, we can provide some support for churches when they got into conflict. Sometimes mm-hmm. we go to talk to this church, go, go to talk to that church. And also uh, in terms of uh, help local church, uh, help local church to grow. And uh, some of the, uh, of the uh, atom of the church, how the world church is growing, how we can bring that growth to, to members in China, how, how we can in, in, encourage them to, 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 to do church growth so that uh, the member can grow in China. In these areas, we can, we can certainly support, right. but we don't have any administrative uh, relationship with the churches in China. Right. Yes. So the church in China, obviously, uh, from what you describe, has a, a rather unusual situation, but then it arrives from a very specific situation, a political situation in the People's Republic of China. But of course, it also arises from a very specific history. Uh, And as you mentioned, the Chinese Union mission, as we know it today, um, is not very old, only only 21 years this year. 
And yet, actually, of course, the work in China has a much longer history. Yes. And indeed, yes. for 20 years, there was a China division. Um, and of course, China, as we know, has a billion people. So you, you just have a small job to do there, Daniel, uh, taking yes. care yes. Of, of the church. Mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. there is that Adventism. And I would guess many viewers don't know and would think, ah, the, the, uh, the Adventist church in China is chiefly results from the interest in Christianity that I think it's now reasonably well known that there's an interest in Christianity in some parts of China, but actually the history of the church goes back a very long way. And that shapes, I think the Chinese union mission still today. So, Jenny, so, Jenny. so what is the importance for the Chinese union of the encyclopedia of seventh day Adventists, a project that is essentially telling the history? What is the importance of the project for you? Uh, for me, uh, as uh, we look at this project, I think really uh, uh, the importance is that uh, we can look at the history and uh, certainly learn from what happened in the past can also give us wisdom that we can uh, do our, our work in the future. The, uh, as, as you look at uh, China Division as the, mis uh, the early missionaries, they were mainly uh, sent from from North America, uh, early missionaries that uh, yes. they they go into China, and uh, the uh, for example the the very first uh, missionary Abraham Larue, which well actually was not officially sent by the church, but uh, he came anyway in his old age. But uh, that was really because the the love of our brothers and sisters for them to bring this gospel message to this part of the world. And we can see, as I mentioned, that uh, now uh, a half a million uh, Adventist members in China, which, uh, which, which comes from very humble beginning. But uh, uh, that's, that's, that's going to, to look at the history, to, to review the history, and uh, to, to, to look at what happened in the past is, is really meaningful for us to of course, one, one, one side is to, to think about uh, what happened in the past. But that, that, as I said, many things we can learn from early missionaries, how the church uh, has grown. And of course, there are un and, uh, lessons that we can also learn from. Daniel, uh, our believers in China were cut off for certainly, what, 40 years, in some ways, maybe 50 years. Do they know the history? Is the history important to them? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, the uh, that's that's. I think uh, David, you you hit on another point to remind them of the history of what happened in the past. I would say that we 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 have. I think maybe ten or fifteen years ago, Chinese in a mission. We put together a Chinese history. Uh, of, of the Adventist history, which may, you may have seen a volume, to, yes. uh, the Chinese volume of that. Yes. But uh, really, uh, that's probably the only historical uh, record, or which is not a really academic. But we have some some people wrote many. Uh, remember what happened in the past. That's put in into the into the volume. But uh, as uh, uh, the Seventh Day Adventist Encyclopedia. This project can really bring out those story what happened in the past, uh, and for members that, uh, of course, right now it's in English. Most of the members in China, they will need some kind of translation. But uh, mm. the content is there. We, I, I think, is really valuable even for our members in China. Uh, I can even give some examples, some stories that uh, in. In, um, in my research on my team, as we do, are really fascinating that uh, can really remind and, and encourage our uh, brothers and sisters as they read and find out and as they uh, ponder on the story happening in the past. Dr. Chaya, you, you mentioned uh, some interesting stories that you would like to share. And I think the stories, especially the stories about missionaries, are the highlight of the encyclopedia and perhaps of these interviews. So would you share some stories that st stood out for you or maybe surprised you? Yes, um, one, uh, one person uh, that, uh, which was a missionary in China, 
uh, Dr. Trin, which uh, you have also visited his grave. Uh, his name is um, Clarence uh, Chrysler, uh, which uh, uh, which you would remember that uh, you have also been to his his, uh, his grave. Yes. Just uh, as we were uh, looking looking back, can I share a, a few pictures uh, slide slide? Wonderful. Yes, please. Yes, please, please. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let me uh, let me just uh, uh, share. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this one um, is uh, which I, I look at from uh, the China Division report. As you can see here, it's uh, uh, 1936. It is the, actually a report that uh, uh, after he has passed away, a funeral, and um, you can you can you can see that uh, uh, here says in his uh, last itinerary in Xianfu, Shanxi, and uh, uh, he is uh, uh, as I remember that uh, he was in a few years also the uh, uh, secretary for Ellen G. Ellen, Ellen White uh, uh, a few years. And he came into China, and uh, uh, then you can see that uh, this is also on the second page of this uh, 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 China Division report that uh, he is. Uh, they are laying the um, uh, tomb for him. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, as uh, I look at this, I I, I see that uh, this another uh, uh, a third picture is that. Uh, you can see on this screen, says Pastor Chrysler and Governor of Qinghai Province, uh, Xining. This really, at least for me, that uh, make a lot of meaning because I I was born in Qinghai Province, mm. and at that time he was already talking to the governor of Qinghai, mm. and uh, as he was there and uh, uh, doing uh, doing missionary work, and. This book, I think some of you uh, have may have read. Uh, Christian, yes, he yes. has written this book, China's Borderland and Beyond. Two pictures from this this book, are very interesting. Uh, here, uh, I just took a picture of the of uh, from the book. Here it says in Guiyang Seventh Day Adventist Church, as they appear at 1934 annual meeting, high up on wires encircling the interior may be seen many provincial maps upon which are indicated by large dots of red the number of Xi'an occupied in every province. Xi'an is county, meaning that they at that time they were already putting maps up in the church that uh, looking at and enter places that uh, they are they are wanting to pray for these places they have a strategic plan that how right. to enter enter so these actually, places they're actually planning that way as you say they have a strategic plan to reach china yes yes right. yes so that's that's very interesting right now even we are looking at you know they are in different cities in china uh, province uh, in, in cities all over five hundred thousand uh, million people that uh, that will encourage local church in China to 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 uh, actively looking at the cities and uh, and to to send their uh, church members to to share with the gospel uh, to those uh, cities in China. And that time, Krishna he was doing that. You can see that in the in the in the in the in the annual meeting, they were they were putting up this uh, these banners. They were they were doing that. Another picture is, is also in the same book, maps, songs, and exhibits emphasizing the importance of Xi'an occupancy as spread on the platform of 1935 biannual session of the North China Union. Peiping, Peiping is actually Beijing right now. It's, it's in the Beijing area. You can see that in that high up on the platform, there is a map which is Including Beijing and the surrounding in the cent in the central part in the surrounding uh, 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 provinces, 1935, 
Mm-hmm. I don't think many people in China today, especially young people, know any of this. But as we look at the story in the past, it is just mind-boggling that today we're talking about, you know, uh, as we uh, we go forward, we want to uh, we want to uh, evangelize to many different places, and they were doing the same thing in 1935. You know, looking at the map, looking at strategies, and how to share share uh, gospel, and bring that to this place, which uh, Dr. Trim you have been to. That's in in just outside the Lanzhou, yes. uh, the city of Lanzhou. That's yes. where where the tomb uh, uh, the missionary uh, Chrysler is. You, you, it's quite a walk, you know, going up yes. the slope. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then this is right here in outside the Lanzhou. If you get a chance, you can visit there. Clarence uh, uh, Krieger Chrysler, that's his tomb. Mm-hmm. Our church in Lanzhou, they know about him and they come here. You can see that uh, the tomb is, uh, has the, has it is well well kept there in uh, in Lanzhou. So that's a uh, that's really really a, a a good way to remember the missionaries. So that's a very uh, good example. That when we write up this story, I don't know who's uh, tasked to write up the uh, Chrysler's uh, story, but uh, who whoever is writing up this story for the uh, our encyclopedia. He's what he has done in the past, connecting with his tomb, connecting with with the strategy. I think that's just uh, uh, such a powerful testimony that uh, God's work, even 1935, in the 1930s, that uh, how they are doing God's work still mm. impacting our today. So that's a that that's one good example I could think of. Uh, it's just. As as I review that, I think uh, just just so powerful, so so meaningful. Yes. Uh, also encourage me a lot. Yes. 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 Indeed. Indeed. This is this is really a powerful testimony, and knowing that uh, some missionaries actually uh, died and were buried in the country of, of their mission uh, uh, is a testimony of their devotion and love for the people they served. So this is really, really uh, uh, an inspiring story. And as you said, there are many others like this in the encyclopedia, yes, encyclopedia.adventist.org. Yes. Um, also, uh, um, medical work is very important in, in China and Hong Kong. And uh, there is an interesting article about the Hong Kong Adventist Hospital in, in the encyclopedia mm-hmm. and other yes, medical yes. institutions. Would you tell us a few words about Adventist medical work in your part of the world? Yeah, right now, uh, the uh, medical work started with the uh, 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 Sorry, I suddenly forgot his name. Maybe we can pause here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, the medical work in Hong Kong uh, started with uh, Dr. Harry Miller, and uh, he built a a hospital uh, here in Hong Kong. Right now, we have two hospitals in Hong Kong, uh, one in the uh, the New Territory side, the other is in the Hong Kong Island. And they are the one of the first uh, private hospital built here in Hong Kong, and uh, really uh, it has served the community here in Hong Kong for many, for many years, and especially uh, for the Hong Kong side. I mean, for the uh, for the new territory side, uh, in 2015 uh, they have uh, started. They have finished the construction of a new, new uh, tower, which is. Uh, 23 or 26 uh, story high and uh, with uh, with brand new facilities and uh, with a bad capa- capacity probably up to 500 to 600 beds it's really really amazing that uh, start start from uh, dr miller uh, he was also in shanghai uh, uh, with the, with the med- with the medical work there start from shanghai had had this shanghai sanitarium was also started by dr miller and he was the uh, he was the personal uh, doctor for 
for Chiang Kai-shek, and you know, he 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 was uh, he was very famous in his time when he was doing do, doing medical work. Again, that uh, a person who was doing that in that time continue on the legacy today. We can see because he has started, and then we have very two outstanding hospital here in Hong Kong. Yes, of course, yes. we have many other hospitals here started in China, which now the building has. Uh, has been uh, given to the Chinese government, but yes. we are many hospitals, clinic mm -hmm. across different places in China, which uh, the medical work has started at that time. Mm. Yes, uh, so, so we can say that medical work is another legacy of the Seventh-day Adventism in, in, in China and, and Hong Kong. Uh, Dr. Jai, thank you so much for sharing these stories. And uh, there are many more in the encyclopedia, and, and I hope that you sparkled an interest in our viewers to go and check other articles about Adventism in China and, and Hong Kong. So what would you like to share with our viewers and the readers of the encyclopedia for the very end of this interview? Is there any encouragement from you? Yeah, I think as we are involved in writing uh, articles for for institutions, for for people, uh, for missionaries here in this part of the world, I'm really encouraged to see the dedicated spirit of those early missionaries. Uh, without their de dedication, really, we don't have the church today. Early missionaries, as they go into China. Uh, they adapt into the local situation. Mm. Uh, I have seen pictures that sometimes they, you know, they dress up like local Chinese. They they live like local Chinese. They they learn the local language. At that time, they can only uh, go by horse carriage or on, on horseback, mm. and sometimes they travel days in the mountains to reach in certain places. But those stories are really inspiring, and especially for young people today. I think uh, that uh, those these encyclopedia articles, when we finish writing them, that's a true inspiration for them to look at what happened in the past and encourage them to, to continue forward. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of difficulty they face, because God has led in the past, he will also continue to lead us in the future. Amen, and amen. it's also, of course, true that the message was then taken on by so many indigenous Chinese workers. And one of the great pleasures I have is that the encyclopedia is telling the stories of their lives as well. Biographies are still oh, being yes, written certainly. of many of them. Yes, yes, <clears throat> but yes, already yes. there are some of those on the uh, encyclopedia website um, and there will be more. And uh if if anyone watching is interested in Chinese history, we know there's a great, of course, large Chinese diaspora around the world. Um, if anyone is interested in writing, we still need authors. <clears throat> but we are being... Yeah, certainly. I will, I mean, I will agree with that. Looking for authors to write articles, that's certainly... Uh, we, we, we hope more people can help us to write articles. Um, <clears throat> but... Now, yes, we need though we need help to finish the encyclopedia project, um, but we appreciate so much, Daniel, what you and your president, uh, Elder Bob Falkenberg, and your team at the Chinese Union Mission have done to support this project. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Seventh Day Adventists couldn't have launched without support from church administrators all around the world. But I am happy to say Chinese Union Mission was one of the most supportive. Um, putting somebody on staff, in fact, to, to write articles. So, Daniel, thank you so much for the tremendous support you've given to the ESDA project. And uh, continuing to give, as you say, as we move towards uh, completing the Chinese block of articles for the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. And thank you very much for being our guest today. We really appreciated uh, you shared very fully and clearly uh, and also showed some wonderful pictures. So thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We pray the encyclopedia brings tremendous blessings for the church in 
the People's Republic of China in Hong Kong, Macau, and indeed beyond. Amen. That was Dr. Daniel Zhao, the Executive Secretary of the Chinese Union Mission. Please go to encyclopedia.adventist.org to read articles from China, from Northern Asia Pacific, and more than 2,200 other articles. The address again is encyclopedia.adventist.org. See you soon with another ESDA editor or another administrator who's worked closely with ESDA and also with new stories from the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists Online.